if there is a carrot and reed trial part two, you can't have it in Canton again. I mean, it, it, with any sort of realistic expectation of an unbiased jury, but Massachusetts isn't that big. <laughs> so, right. Like, where do you go? I mean, you, you can't take it out of state, correct? Oh, no, no so you, you have go to, to have it like, there. You got to go to the Western Mass. Yeah. Like, you got to go way, way almost to the border of Western Massachusetts. You can't stay, you can't stay on the Eastern eastern massachusetts side man i mean you get like you said it's not a huge state mm -hmm. you know and, and like the fact of the matter is i i don't know that there's anywhere in that state where they're going to be able to get a fair and impartial jury to be honest with you i mean no. they'll do the best that they can they're not going to not have the trial mm -hmm. you know because like i mean they're gonna have to do the best that they can you know because it's like we were talking about man it, it like there are people that exist in the world that actively try to get on juries, like in cases like this, mm -hmm. that's facts. Yeah. It's facts, you know, and it's like, and I'm talking about when they get the jury notice and, and I see it like when, in the Delphi case, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm covering that very closely and I'm yeah. on boots on the ground. And when they sent out the thing, the jury noticed, you know, there was like people that want to sit on that jury yeah, because of that kind of case, you know what I mean? And just high profile cases, like you're always going to have court observers that just would kill to get on that, that trial or, you know, so it's like, I don't know, man. I, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's in like, I, I just think that ultimately there's going to be a documentary like five, you know, three, three years down the road about like four or five trials. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just think they're going to keep getting the same result because the evidence is not going to change. Yeah. Like, I mean, if I'm the Commonwealth, I'm certainly not putting, uh, you know, Trooper Paul up there again. <laughs> Why not? So I'm just for the I'm hell going of it. To, right. I'm going to find a better expert than him. Yeah. Who can just, you know, who just is going to, you know, be able to break it down for the jurors better, mm -hmm. you know, and just come off as more knowledgeable. You know, like the Proctor issue. I don't know what you do with him. I mean, because. The fact of the matter is if the Commonwealth doesn't call him, the defense will. Exactly. They're never escaping that guy. No. Like that guy is he's he was unfortunately a very integral part of the, the investigation. And there, yeah. there's no hiding from that. Like yeah. you can't you can't turn back the hands of time and say, okay, we're gonna remove Proctor. You're gonna have to deal with that, dude, and all the shit that comes along with them. Yep. And now, you know, the timing was, you know, specious in my opinion, in terms of them you know, announcing that they've, they've, you know, removed him from, you know, being a detective at the Norfolk County DA's office, you know, he's, he's been relieved of that duty and people were, people were, were mistaken that he was fired. He wasn't exactly fired. that I, didn't I was like. telling people on my live. I'm like, nah, man, you, you got, you got unions, cop yeah. unions. They're tough. He's like, not fired. Tough. No, he's just, fired. it's like the Catholic church. He's been moved to another, <laughs> another, right. another diocese right. and like, Oh, we'll see what happens over here. Um, I mean, they didn't even put him in like the, the abyss really. No. I think they moved him to like South Boston, you know? Yeah. So it's like, they didn't put him like in, in like, you know, butt fuck somewhere. Like exactly. we're, we're going to put you in absolute purgatory where you can't do yeah. any harm or the crime rate is zero. <laughs> where you're never going to investigate it, but he's still got to go through a disciplinary hearing. Yeah. So, you know, which that, that could, they have to go through their process, which could in fact lead to his complete dismissal, but right. we'll see. Right. I, like or, procedurally you know, suspense, wise, death, duty, whatever, yeah, you know procedurally what I mean? wise, they couldn't just fire him. Uh, right. by, well, by, I mean, you know. it's, it's a collective bargaining yep. issue with the union. I mean, that, yep. that's why they have unions. It's, it's yep. tough. Yeah. It's, you know, teachers, cops, anywhere there's a union, it's, it's tough to just shit can somebody. Sure, you know? sure. If you're a Karen Reed at this point, uh, what would you what would you advise her if you're her attorney right now? Would you be saying, hey, let's figure out some sort of a plea deal and let's all get on with our lives? Um, or do you say, let's, you know, let's keep pushing this. Let's keep trying this. And then God knows how long that's going to take. And it's just going to keep dragging life through the mud. And I guess it's kind of a question of quality of life and, and when you want to get back to some semblance of normalcy. I mean, again, like the, the immediate answer is I need to know what the count was. Yeah. From, I have to have an idea if if we were 
oh, ever so close to getting an acquittal, or if we were, oh, ever so far from getting an acquittal, you know, because like, like I'm sure you're like, and, and I disregard everything that I've read because it's not coming from the jurors, but sure. I, I've seen people saying it was a 10 to guilty split. I, I don't give it any. We just don't know yet. Like, yeah. You don't know, but in, in, in the importance of like for both sides to know is to see how the case played out in the, in the eyes of the jury. Mm -hmm. Like nothing matters more than that. You know, it's like the Commonwealth saying that they, they, you know, intend on retrying or, you know, that was for the benefit of Mrs. O'Keefe, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, like you, you have to feel terrible for her. She's sitting in that courtroom, heartbroken, just went through 10, 10 weeks. And it's like, she got no, no relief one way or another. She got no, like, she couldn't be angry. She couldn't be, she just had to be like disappointed and sad that she's got to go through this thing again. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, like if, if Karen's acquitted, then at least she, she could have been like furious and angry if she really believes that, that Karen's the one who did this, um, you, you know, or if, if she's convicted, then she feels joy, you know, some amount of joy. I mean, like verdicts never heal families in the, in the wounds that they suffer from the loss of their, their loved ones. I mean, that's like that. You're not like, <laughs> Our, our, our justice, our form of justice is pretty hollow. Yeah. You know, certainly you want to see the person who commits a crime punished, but it, it doesn't I, like, in, I haven't suffered the loss personally, mm -hmm. but I've been a part of the, the criminal justice system to know it, it just, it, it, it gives some form of relief, Yeah, but it doesn't come close to obviously bringing your loved one back. Yeah. I mean, you know, so I, but it's, I mean, it's the best that we can do in this and, you know, anywhere really. So I don't know, man. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts and especially Apple podcasts where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.